Hey everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today I get to share with you a Lego custom build for one of the more unique Starfighter designs within the Star Wars universe. This is the minifigure scale Nantex class Starfighter from the designer David Buckles. You don't see a ton of this ship in the movies or Clone Wars show as it's a defensive fighter for the Geonosians, so it never really left that system, kind of similar to maybe a Naboo N1 Starfighter or a Coruscant police gunship, but every time the Republic does face off against the Nantex, it seems to hold its own pretty darn well every single time. There really is a lot to talk about with this little craft. Essentially, nothing looks flies or shoots quite like a Nantex. But before we jump in, if you are interested in building this for yourself, you can get the instructions at our web store, brickvault.toys. With each instructions purchase comes a PDF step-by-step -step guide and a digital parts list to upload for ordering all of your pieces online. Every single one of our models are hand tested for strength. The instruction steps are troubleshot for clarity and the parts for the model are chosen so they can be found more easily. Buying instructions from us is an excellent way to help support our channel and the extremely talented people that we work with like David, who has made a wide variety of custom fig scale designs. His models include the Republic gunships, the ATTE, the larger dropship that attaches. He's also done the three legged ATAP, the smaller ATRTs, a forward command center for the clones, a few different kinds of bark speeders, several different types of sheathapede shuttles, along with a Phantom II variant that fits in with the UCCS Ghost, and one of my personal favorites, the T 16 Skyhopper. So, Needless to say, this ain't David's first rodeo. That is BrickVault.toys. Click the link in the description below if you wanted to get started with any of these builds. And now let's take a closer look at the Nantex, also commonly known as just the Geonosian Starfighter. So this vertically layered double needle nose design sandwiches together two different modules that can freely move around on multiple axes. The single thruster in the back can turn and tilt up and down, making this ship surprisingly maneuverable. Plus the single very fast repeating purple laser in the center can also tilt for an extra axis of aiming. In the second battle of Geonosis, you can see the groups of Nantex fighters in a constant spin while on their attack runs. At first, I thought this was done to confirm fuse would-be defenders from anticipating their next evasive maneuver, but now I think this maybe was done to help give the laser a more dynamic moving axis for better aim. It seems counterintuitive, but when reading the descriptions of this ship, it also says that the inside of the needle noses are lined with 100 small tractor beams, not only to help guide or direct the shots for the pilot, but the tractor beams could also help keep the Nantex on the tail of an enemy if they manage to get close enough. So these little understuds that you see along the edge of the nose here show the details for all those tiny tractor beams. Also, if you count each circular divot, it comes out to 28 per edge, which is almost just in line with the 100 total tractor beams in the description. I don't know if David did that on purpose, but it is cool that it lines up so darn close. And now let's move on to the cockpit. A Geonosian minifigure in Lego has the same body as a standard fig, which means the controls aren't set up in some strange way. So uh, this fits in normally with a human body. The details for the Lego model here are fairly straightforward. While the in-universe version of this ship has, I think, four yolks and a breathing mask that is supposed to send chemical pheromones to the insect-like Geonosian pilot. Anyways, fun facts aside, it is a fine build for a cockpit like this. And ultimately, this ship is fairly wild. It's got a lot more of those out there kind of sci-fi concepts compared to most anything else you see dogfighting in Star Wars. And I can't say based on how you see the Nantex perform on screen that it's some next level kind of starfighter, but it certainly beats the heck out of gunships and ends up inflicting a lot more damage than the Republic anticipated. Good thing those bugs can't aim. 
I'd be curious to see where this ship stands in an overall combat rating, like if you were to pit it against an RZ-1 or a TIE Interceptor, or maybe to be more era accurate, you might want to compare this to an N-1, a Vulture Droid, or something else. Anyways, it's a fairly easy model to handle. The thicker back half of the build has plenty of good grip. It swooshes easier than most anything else from the custom building world. And the nose isn't particularly sturdy, I'll say. You'll want to squeeze it together again after you mess around with it. But it's also an area that I would not classify as fragile or anything. The whole model comes off and on the stand with no weird breaks, which is always fun. And all in all, it's a fairly easy and casual build to handle and move around the studio. So there we go, fleshing out more of the Clone Wars universe, specifically the Separatist forces. I didn't know half of the interesting facts about the Nantex until actually making this video, which gets me kind of curious what other ships have weird sort of sci-fi or out there technology uh, being used to guide them that I am totally unaware of. If you know of some weird Star Wars ships that use weird technology like a hundred tractor beams or something, let me know in the comments below. Of course, comment, let me know what types of other models you would like to see in the future. If you enjoy our content, feel free to like, share, do whatever it is that you want to do. Thanks for sticking around to the end, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.